Like many kids, I always grew up wanting more. Nothing was ever enough. I always wanted the flashiest football boots, the widest TV screen, the most upgraded phone, or the most popular branded clothing. Nothing was ever enough because I continually compared what I had at home to what other people had at theirs. At the age of 18, to some degree, it all happened for me. I was going to one of the best business schools in the country. I was playing international sport, and I was modeling, which for some reason was something I always wanted to do. With an abundance of self-confidence in my back pocket, I was flying high, to say the least. Within my first nine months of university, my Instagram following grew by 100,000. I'd done my first cover shoot, and I'd flown to Los Angeles and Milan. A huge spike in female attention, fancy parties, fancy people. My life was becoming a bit of a highlight reel and a show reel, and I absolutely loved it. My ego was taking in every ounce of attention as I craved it every day. But unfortunately for me, I realized at quite a young age that the glamour wasn't really that glamorous. I was actually feeling quite lost and disconnected. Many friendships were based on a following, and the material things that I was given brought a short-term kick. And while everyone I truly knew assumed I was having a great time from what they were seeing on social media, I was actually feeling disconnected, isolated, and quite lonely. See, I actually find the Instagram following quite tough. You're always expected to be the best looking person in the room, or the most exciting, or to have the most to offer, when actually you just want to enjoy being you and what is going on in your life. The difficult thing that I have found is the detachment of meaning from my reality. When you're given lots of free things, it often loses its value, and you begin to question, why is this happening to me? Getting free tickets to a festival because my parents had a September snuggle back in 1998 somehow doesn't add up despite giving me a pretty face. You begin to question why it's happened to you. Even though you're getting these great opportunities, you sometimes feel like a walking marketing tool and not an actual human being. Studying consumer behavior at university opened my eyes to the mental thrills we experience during the purchasing process of products. The quote from Fight Club by Tyler Durden, we buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like, inspired me to explore further. We always end up buying things to impress other people and not actually for our own good. Behind the parade that my social media was advertising, I've actually really struggled at times. The, the, the lack of structure at university gave me a sense of purposelessness, and that combined with my often narcissistic view towards modeling drove me to neglect the things that truly valued me. I stopped seeing the people who were best for me, and I stopped playing water polo for my country, which was one of the biggest honors that I had. My image became my purpose, and my phone became my tool. In the first term of university, I did a photo shoot, which was met with a wealth of praise and attention. But as I returned to a normal diet, I began to put on weight, and I panicked. I didn't really know what to do because I'd become so validated and addicted by the likes and the followers as they came rolling in that I was hooked, and I couldn't get enough of it. I began to count my calories. I weighed my food, I worked out every single time after I put food in my body to justify what I had done. I even, on some occasions, on a night out, made myself throw up because I felt so much pressure to obtain this appearance and to show other people that this was the perceived life to strive for. The strict dieting, my constant comparison to other models, and my abuse of social media fostered an eating disorder to develop, which in turn, led to depression and anxiety, which unfortunately still occasionally creeps up on me. I went from being incredibly vain, self-assured, and arrogant to a degree, to waking up in the morning hating the way that I looked, constantly analyzing myself for the attention of others, and at times being so traumatized by what was going on in my own head that I didn't recognize myself. Instead of feeling self-confident, I was continually chasing other people's approval. What I've realized from this experience is that we have created unrealistic and unhealthy expectations for other people. 
In the words of the great Charlie Chaplin, more than machinery, we need humanity. More than cleverness, we need kindness. Now, I hate the term influencer. I really, really dislike it. But everyone has an influence. It's not just me. It depends, though, on the scope of the people that you can reach. I didn't ask for an Instagram following, but it happened to me off the back of a modeling career. But what I've realized from that is that when you do have an influence, that's powerful. And so you have a sense of responsibility. And that's something that I need to take into account for myself. See, I was motivated to do this by a positive influencer called Prince EA. Now, Prince EA has a huge following on Instagram, and he influences people to do the right thing in his opinion. So good mental health um, and feeling good about yourself and positive self-care. And he made a speech, and he said that when you're pulled over for drunk driving, you're said to be under the influence. Or if you're ill, you're said to be coming down with influenza. He says so many people are ill today because of the toxic ideas that are put into their head. Unhappiness, stress, depression, and anxiety are at the highest that they've ever been because young people are consistently comparing themselves and feeling bad about themselves. Influencers have us chasing unattainable beauty, material wealth, and this constant happiness that doesn't exist. And so often when I post a photo of me modeling or just trying to make a bit of money on the side to support myself as a student, I feel really guilty because I worry about what I'm influencing people to do. I'm so grateful to social media for the opportunities that it's given to me. I've been able to build a network of people, have a platform to share my opinion, and travel parts of the world because of what it has given me. I'm trained to be a personal trainer, have a small degree of financial freedom, and I'm standing on this stage talking to you today because of the opportunities that it has given me. But we need to change the way that we use our platforms. The same people who developed the algorithms for social media also built the games in casinos. And so there's absolutely no surprise whatsoever that I've been addicted to my phone since I was 13 years old. It plays on my mind and causes huge amounts of overthinking. Social media is a drug, and for the last seven years, I've been abusing it. I would like to think that I'm a very confident, good-looking, ambitious young man, but that is often all that anyone else sees. It's very unusual for a young man to stand in front of a group of people and tell them that he's struggled with an eating disorder. The truth is, is that not many people can. I can do it because I'm trying to change my perspective. To take hardships as learning curves, to take negatives and turn them into positives. You see, what I've been through has been one of the most uncomfortable, awful things I could possibly describe, and I'd never wish it on anyone else. But it's also made me understanding, caring, compassionate, and it's given me a drive to actually start doing good. We all as humans have this great need for acceptance, to be appreciated and approved by other people. But the truth is, you don't have to follow someone because someone else does. If someone isn't good for you and you're following them and it's having a negative effect on you, get rid of them. You don't have to have a six pack because a Calvin Klein model or someone you see online does. Neither do you have to smash pints every single night of the weekend to be a massive lad and fit in. You don't have to wear Jordans on your feet or have a designer clothing like Supreme on your chest to be valued or fit in with a social circle. We live in a world that is becoming dictated by social media, which can often be an incredibly unforgiving, hostile and harsh environment. Now, more than ever, we need to start educating people, to create awareness, to start basing happiness on genuine memories, friendships, connection, and not, this, not likes and validation through followers and constant memories, sorry, constant measurement. It's incredibly unhealthy, and it's just causing more problems than it is good. You can have 100 followers, you can have 100,000 followers. Jesus had 12, and he's probably the biggest influencer I can name. So if I'm going to influence you with anything today, let it be this. If you are struggling mentally with your mental health, talk. Take a step back and seek help. A mental injury is just the same as a physical injury, and it's absolutely nothing to be ashamed about. And when you speak about it, you kill the stigma that surrounds it. I can stand here and say, yes, I suffered with an eating disorder, but I'm also a human being. 
and I have a life that I actually want to look forward to, so I got the help that I needed. As much as social media is telling you that you should be happy, on form, beautiful, and having lots of friends and achieving lots all the time, that's not realistic. The sweet is only so sweet because you have the bitter to compare it to. You cannot be happy the whole time. It doesn't exist. You have moments of joy and happy moments because you have low moments to compare it to. People need to connect with people, not thumbs behind a screen. So many young people are depressed today because of the addictive nature of phones and they are substituting um, online connection with instead of going out and meeting people. And it's just isolating people even more. And my final point I want to leave you with today, you don't have to be like somebody else to be somebody. Be as unique as you possibly can be, regardless of what everyone else is doing. Live a life and not a mirage. So the next time that you go on your phone when you're bored and your instinct is telling you to pull out your phone and go on social media, ask yourselves, am I using social media or is social media using me? Thank you.